From the Oregon State University Extension Service, this is Pollination, a podcast that tells the stories of researchers, land managers, and concerned citizens making bold strides to improve the health of pollinators. I'm your host, Dr. Adoni Melithopoulos, Assistant Professor in Pollinator Health in the Department of Horticulture. I have been holding on to this episode for months now, six months maybe. It was when I went to the Young Harris uh, uh, Beekeeping Institute. Uh, it was just a highlight of my uh, entire year, in fact. It was a really wonderful experience meeting the Georgia beekeepers. And I remember that feeling of walking into the room and seeing this magnificent license plate that the Georgia Beekeepers Association had brought to be, uh, brought to bear. I'm releasing this episode now, and you'll hear about this maybe in an episode from uh, more details in an episode from here. We now have a new Oregon license plate dedicated to bees. We're selling vouchers. We have to sell 3,000 vouchers. You need to buy a voucher. Visit the show notes or go to OregonBeePlate.org to find out about it. But the inspiration many points of inspiration, but a key inspiration came from talking with Gail Dean. Now, Gail um, uh, heads up legislative matters for the Georgia Beekeepers Association and really was the driving, one of, was a driving force. There were many driving forces, but was a driving force in bringing the license plate to bear, uh, uh, to the light of day in Georgia. It was a much more difficult process than we had here in Oregon. So I'm really delighted to finally release this episode so you can hear about the wonderful camaraderie, the excellent spirit of working together uh, uh, in Georgia, which is now uh, finding its own feet here in Oregon. So without further, ado- <laughs> without further ado, here's Gail Dean this week on Pollination. All right, just a sound check here. Um, B-E-E, one, two, three. Woohoo! Okay. I don't think we're, we're rolling. Well, I am uh, here at the Young Harris Beekeeping Institute, the 30th anniversary yes. of, of uh, Young Harris. Um, and I'm right across from me is Gail. We were just chatting, as I love with this podcast, by the coffee urns. But what struck me right away is I saw a beautiful table with, uh, for people to learn about the uh, honeybee plate here in the state of Georgia. Where did the honeybee plate start? Well, I was um, new to beekeeping. Oh, you were? And um, that was about eight years ago, and I was a member of the Georgia Beekeepers Association and the Metro Atlanta Beekeepers Association and some other little beekeepers association. I went to my first board meeting and the president at the time this was about six years ago the president of the time said you know we've been talking about doing a bee license tag in the state of Georgia and a bunch of folks said you'll never get that done because it's so hard and the legislature's all divided and everything and I raised my hand and said well I'll try to get it oh my wow (laughs) what was I thinking (laughs) Well, okay, so this is how it started. That's how it started. But I imagine, you know, underneath it all, there's, you know, all, all sorts of, you know, having a license plate has this great, um, everybody gets to, it raises the profile, the visibility of bees in a state because it goes up and down the interstate, this picture of the bees and there's the logo on there, save the honeybee. But I imagine the other thing is that there's revenue for many states that apply for plates, there's revenue that can be put back into programming in the state. Yes, and so... Um, One of the things we had to do was um, convince the state house and the state legislature and the governor in Georgia to approve the tag. And part of doing that was coming up with the wording for a bill to be passed in the the state house. And in that bill, we put one of the major things in that bill was education of the public and education of beekeepers that's where the revenue would be spent. We have other areas that don't be spent, but a big thing in changing the image of beekeeping in the state of Georgia is education, and that's what we wanted to do. That is fantastic. Okay, so I, I imagine from that point at the bee club meeting where you put your hand up and sort of said, I'd be interested in taking this on, mm-hmm. to the point where I am, I've sort of 
landed in Georgia. I, I was out in the parking lot here, uh, and I saw all sorts of uh, vehicles with license plate numbers. There was a lot of work involved between that point and this. Yes. What was the, so you went to the legislature, you had to convince legislators in the state of Georgia uh, that this was a good thing so that they would support a bill. Well, the first thing you had to do was, I'm, I'm elected to the Board of Education in Fulton County, which is a big county, and I've been elected for 22 years, and part of what I do is go down and talk to the legislature about education bills that are introduced every year. So I kind of felt comfortable going down to the Capitol and, and talking to okay. legislators. Okay, one, you need somebody who can do that. Yes. Because it's not everybody, it, you gotta be pretty bold well, when you go a, down to the Well, it's a skill house. set, and I was free. Yeah. I mean, they probably could have hired a lobbyist, maybe, mm -hmm. to go do all this stuff. But um, um, you really needed to have a passion and you needed to have an understanding of how a bill gets approved. Okay. So that was thing one, but, but more important than that, every law is different in every state. So I had to go down, um, and, and now I don't have to go down, but because you can do it on the internet, Res research what a revenue producing bill looks like in your state relative to, um, to license tax. And mm -hmm. because it's a, in Georgia, a revenue producing bill, which is the state is giving revenue to someone, uh -huh. has to go through this process. Uh, it gotcha. might be different. It's, mm -hmm. Everything is different in different states. Right. But in Georgia, you had to understand what getting a bill looked like um, in terms of the wording, um, in addition to being able to talk to the legislators. So a lot of it was that, and then convincing my own bee club that this is how we have to do it. Because it, bee cover, beekeepers, as you know, are all a bunch of independent folks. And well, everybody wants to all? do it. Everyone wants to do it their way. So there was a little bit of that one that went on too. So tell me about the strategies of talking to the legislators. How were you able to? Uh, well, were they um, all on board this did, educational approach? I think approach? you met um, Bobby Chase on. Yeah. Right. Bobby was on my committee. Oh wow. Great. Okay. So Bobby is is beekeeper of the year in Georgia. He's a fantastic guy. He keeps bees in Lula, Georgia. It's uh -huh. a small town, and I. Um, he saw me and I said, will you be on the committee? And he said, we have a member in our club in Lula, he's the president, who's a beekeeper and he's also a state legislator. I said, perfect oh. sponsor, perfect sponsor. Isn't it? Yes. And so um, he agreed to sponsor the bill in the House, which is how it has to happen. Uh -huh. So that was a big part of getting him on board mm -hmm. so that there was someone to actually introduce the bill. Okay. Um, and so, okay, the bill passes, and now I guess you have this situation where you need to get people to... Oh, let oh. me tell you what we did. Okay. Before we go to yeah, that, yeah, please do. the bill passes. Yeah. That was huge, yeah. right? It took two years from... Two years? Discussion, to research, wow. to writing, to... And we have every other year everybody gets reelected in the state of yeah. Georgia, so it had to be in, in the first time because in the second time they don't do... A, so you had to, had to hit at the right year. Uh-huh. But part of what we did is we gave every legislator in the state of Georgia, all 260-something of them, a bottle of honey produced in the state of Georgia. And that was monumental. And in, in that, there was um, one of this Save the Honey Bee um, license tag folders which said where the money would go not this one but okay. one that looked like that what the tag looked like you know oh, so by then we have already had artwork and everything done all the stuff the preparatory stuff within the club to be able to go oh, to so them. they would have on their desk they, they kind of see their, every, all, all the details they had on their desk a bottle of honey from this from we tried to match the honey from the area to the and that was impossible to do so we made sure everybody got a pound of honey from a Georgia beekeeper with a copy of the plate with the wording of how the money would be used for education in the state of Georgia. Oh, a great strategy, really well thought out. And I imagine for a busy legislator, just having everything there plus a little bit of sweetness yes. is a great is a is a selling is a selling uh, is a selling uh, package. It's ready to go. Okay. They were excited. We had a lot of people wanted more honey. <laughs> <laughs> Good. That's what we want to do. 
Okay, so um, the bill has passed, and now you've got um, a design. Tell about how did you how did you come up with a design? So how we came yeah, up with a design? Back up a bit. We decided um, that we wanted it. The only way we thought we were going to sell these tags is to get everybody in the state involved in the Georgia Beekeepers Association. Yeah. And so what we did is we sent out word to all, I think at the time we had 42 clubs, uh -huh. and we sent out the word through our communications that we wanted artists to enter a contest oh. to design the license tag. Uh -huh. And so we got lots of designs from all over the state, and the group, I was on the committee to approve it, and we were blind. We didn't know who brought the plates, uh -huh. you know, who designed them, who submitted them. We got it down to three, and then we went back to the, we, we took their submissions, which had to be the size of a license tank, and we put them on cars, and that was part of how we decided which ones to, to choose, because they had to, you had to be able to see it if you're driving down the road. I imagine right? that's the thing. By committee to make a license plate or whatever, all these little details that nobody's going to see. But what you did is you asked for a competition, you took the designs, you printed them up, and then you put them on a car, and then you right. could say, mm -hmm. that I can see, right. and that's attractive. So then what we did is once uh. we did that, we could see what parts of those tags needed improvement to be able to see it on the back of a car. Because we had to submit it to the state, and they had to approve it, right? And so we wanted the design to be approved at the first, you know, the bureaucratic machine in Georgia is very big and yeah. difficult to maneuver. Yeah. We wanted to get in and out as quickly as possible uh, on, the, on the design part. So we went back to those three artists, you know, not, not the ones of us on the committee, yeah. but the president of the association went back and said, you know, th this needs to be, these colors need to be more vibrant, or this part of the art needs to not be a beehive, it needs to be an artistic bee. You know, we can't have it look like the Georgia Tech bee. It has to be a, almost like a cartoon bee yeah. that can be seen, you know. And we went back, and once we did, we came up with the tag that you see here um, that was approved. You know, I love it. It's strikingly s simple. Mm -hmm. It's got a great color pattern. And it's yeah. real easy to understand yeah. what this is about. We wanted to show that Georgia has mountains and it has plains and, you know, so it, uh, we thought it really looked dramatic. Okay. It's nothing like any license tags that are in the state. And we have a lot of, of um, what we call revenue producing tags. But none of them, ours is the best by far. I you think guys have done a ma magnificent job. It is a beautiful plate. Thank you. So, okay, so then you've got these, this design and you've got it authorized to, mm -hmm. to start the process. Mm -hmm. How, what's the process of getting? Like okay, so in Georgia what happened is we had to, we, we could do one of two things. We could wait and sell, like you said, vouchers to people where, you know, you agree to buy it, you give it the money, we'll hold it, and mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Or we could get the state to agree to, um, we could pay for the money in advance for the first thousand plates, and then they would go ahead and accept the money, and, but they wouldn't produce them until we had actually sold a thousand. But we actually kept the money then, because we had already paid for it. So, uh -huh. so the state gave us a form. We filled out the form when somebody wanted to buy it. They gave us the money, and we gave the state the form. So they had to have a thousand of those forms, yeah. but they didn't. Ha we ha didn't have to go through the transfer of money. Okay, does that gotcha. make sense? Yes, it does. Okay, so we got. Um, we had to convince our club and our board to go ahead and put up this twenty-five thousand dollars in advance. Yeah. That's the twenty-five dollar manufacturing fee for each one of the yeah, thousand yeah. plates that had to be redone, and with the promise that we would get it back Ooh. on the first thousand plates that we sold. Going out on right? a limb there a bit. Yes. yes. And then once that happened, right, we would be even. And then from that on, you know, we wouldn't be paying $25 to manufacture. The purchaser would pay that directly. And then we would get our reimbursement um, from the state, which is $22 per tag. And so how did that initial sale go? So we... First, we took. Oh the wait, wait. How did? Yeah. What was your strategy to get the sales? Like, how did okay, you? Okay, so yeah. we went all over social media and through our local clubs. So we constantly, every 
where we went. We had the reproduction of the plate. We gave out placards at every state meeting, at every local meeting. We delivered packages of the uh, of the form to you know come out, buy a plate, da -da -da. and it took us maybe six months, and we had the first thousand sold. Really? Yes. And then Amazing. once we had the first thousand sold, then the state took over the sale and the manufacture and the whole thing through the license tag offices. But we had to do that, and then we had a glitch. The state could not accept money or produce the tags for almost two years because they put in a new software program oh for my. the driver's licenses. Oh and, and so my. anything that required programming and on their part had to be put on hold oh. until they until they redid their, it, it was called the drives program. And it was an $18 million, you know, yeah. program that the state put in for license tags and driver's licenses. So we, here we did all of that. We got everybody's enthusiasm up. Everybody loved it, and then we couldn't produce the test. Oh, okay. Well, all right, but so the two years elapsed, and now this program is up and running. Yes. Oh, uh -huh. the other thing I was going to ask you about is I noticed I love the numbering on here. So it says BEE, and then it has a number. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and when we were talking back at the coffee urn, mm -hmm. you mentioned that um, there was an auction for... Tell me right. a little bit about okay. that. So what we did is we decided that, you know, all the people in Georgia and the Georgia Beekeepers Association, the state organization, who had been a president, a past president, you know, volunteer of the year. So we came up with 100 people. The state said you can have 100 BEE tags, like B001, right? Yeah. For 100 tags. And so we sent out a list to everybody and says, you can get this tag, right? No extra charge or whatever. You just have to, you know, yeah. sign up to get the tag. And they could pick the number they want, yeah. right? So I picked B007. I'm like, Oh, right. dumb. you license to yeah. kill. Yeah. <laughs> so we gave our artist, Julia Mahood, we gave her B100. Uh -huh. And oh, great. Um, so we went through, and there were some 30, 40 tags that didn't get you know, this was early in the process. Mm -hmm. And so we said, okay, what we'll do is we'll have an auction at one of our state meetings. We have two a year. And so we did a silent auction mm -hmm. for each one of the tags numbers that were left that would get B and then a, a three digit number afterwards. And we made a couple of thousand dollars for the state organization. Everyone, so every one of the tags sold. Mm -hmm. And, um, so that was how we we got in. So we wow, it was it was fantastic. So you'll see um, the rest of the tags now just have a mixture of letters and numbers, just like a state tag. Mm -hmm. They would only give us a hundred of the ones that said B one two three. Okay, so uh, you've, you were able to get your plate into production, and now uh, appears. Um, uh, you know, when you go get a license plate, uh, how do you keep the keep it so going? So what happens is we don't do anything. They just send us money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know yeah. you love that, right? <laughs> um, so what happens is we get, um, uh, for every plate sold, the state organization gets $22. Okay. And they charge um, $25 for the, to the purchase. Oh, that is an amazing uh, conversion. So okay, so the so uh, and the, and the people just every year they contribute, you know. They well, what happens in Georgia when you buy a license tag? The first time you buy it, you go down, and you know you select it. Or mm -hmm. now they have it through the new drives program. You can select specialty tags online. Mm -hmm. So once you select that tag, then every year when they bill you for your tag, mm -hmm. they just bill you for that extra fee, mm -hmm. and then they send us the the check for twenty two dollars. So how's this gone? How's the program gone? How is it? It's fantastic. So one of the big, most important things for us is, like I said, education. Um, in the bill, which I got the, the fun part to help write the bill, mm -hmm. we put in the bill that we could um, use the funds that were audited every year. We can use the funds for um, education of beekeepers, education of the public, um, this for the state. Um, research universities, which of course UGA, which is hosting um, this um, Young Harris Bee Institute. So what we do is we have people write grants 
They write grants to us, and then there's a, we have a UGA um, um, Georgia Beekeepers Committee, mm -hmm. and then they approve the grants. So we give grants to UGA, we give grants to local bee clubs, we give grants to schools, Boy Scout troops, you know, you name it. And so we have the funds to be able to do it. But of course, now that people understand that these funds are available, uh, we have somebody that did a joint bee house, so you can sell your honey commercially in Georgia, you have to go through a commercial um, um, extracting house. So mm -hmm. we have one of those that was uh, funded. Oh so we've got all kinds of, all kinds of, so it's fantastic. So we're getting ready to now do another push to expose the tag. So we had them on bus, you know, where you go and get a, catch a bus. Uh -huh. We did that. We have, um, we had uh, lots of Facebook and um, Instagram and we give out all the, you know, the, so we're continuing to do that. You saw here, you walked in and there's a beautiful table with a, yeah. with a, uh, a honeybee tag license plate on it with the information to give out on how to get a tag. Um, we also are trying to, and it's hard to get the individual tag offices now or who's selling the tags. Yeah. And so we, we go to the tag offices and get them to maybe put a picture of the tag in their office so people will know it's available. Uh, right. We have almost half of the tags sold are non-beekeepers. Isn't that something, eh? Well, you know, people are really interested in bees. It's a, it's a big mm -hmm. thing out there. I was, um, mm -hmm. um, so I can understand how it appeals. I guess the one thing that you did mention that I thought was really interesting is that, that, um, and I'm thinking about this for you know our state. We're, we're working on a plate, and other states, mm -hmm. and other beekeeping groups. That um, part of the revenue goes to promotion. Yes, that it's really important. I yeah. think. I don't know how how it works in your state, but in our state, what is in that bill that was passed by the legislature in the House, which by the way was unanimous in both chambers. Wonderful. Which in Georgia getting all those people to agree to anything is a miracle. Right? <laughs> um, and it was immediately signed by the governor. Um, but um, being able to spend those funds on promoting the tag was really important because, you know, typically the state organization doesn't have big coffers. We have more coffers now, but we segregate the funds. The license tag funds are separate of the general fund. Yeah. And, and in knowing that, that, you know, all state organizations aren't flush with funds, we wanted to be able to use the funds that would go in the projections that we had if it was successful, uh -huh. we wanted to be able to promote it within that fund. Uh -huh. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so, um, so we wrote that into the bill, and that, that pretty much the bill as submitted wasn't changed, mm -hmm. and that was in it. So, is there anything else that we've missed? I, I remember the, what, the other thing is that some of that, uh, some of the, those funds go back to the um, uh, uh, UGA and their program. Well, they've applied for UGA applies just like any anyone has ah, to apply, gotcha. apply yeah. for the grant. Yeah. Okay. And if they're if the committee that approves those applications, you know, sometimes they approve all of it, sometimes less. Sometimes they said this is great, you're going to need more. Mm -hmm. So we've done that, and um, if it's approved, then that grant is forthcoming that's amazing well i am really impressed i'm uh, i'm taking all sorts of notes here and i'm uh, thank you so much for uh talking to me and by extension lots of uh beekeepers in oregon about the successes yeah. you've had well, here in I georgia i just really hope you get your tag approved and you increase the awareness in the state by people driving down the road and seeing a tag oh before we end this episode though um I was, this afternoon, I was delighted that a little package came to me, and in it, <laughs> I had a jar of sour sourwood wood honey, honey. Uh, uh -huh. and I learned that it came from you. Yes, Tell me, uh -huh. what is sourwood okay, honey? So, and I, let me just attest, it is a delicious honey. Okay, so, um, I'm a Georgia beekeeper, but I keep my beehives in North Carolina, which is right on the other side of that mountain over there. Okay. Okay, so sourwood is a tree and it grows in the southern Appalachian mountains. Okay. And it... it What's um, it look like? It's about 40 feet tall. Uh-huh. And has elongated leaves. Yeah. And right about now, yeah. if you go outside and you look at a sour tree, you'll see what looks, we call them fingers, coming out of the end of the limbs. Uh -huh. They look like little fingers yeah. dangling. And 
on about July 4th at my elevation at 3,000 feet or a little bit later, those fingers keep coming out and it looks like lily of the valley flowers hanging off the really? end. Really? The and, the, and they're white. And you can <laughs> sit in the lake and look up the mountain and all you see are these white no. trees blooming oh. with these little dangling things. It's very touchy, though. It's depending on weather. And, you know, de you know, so much depends on it. So for the last couple of years, we've not had a very good flow. Last year, we had a, a freeze at April 14th. So everything, the elevation range is about 1,500 to 4,000 feet for sourwood. Mm -hmm. Okay. At 3,000 feet, the freeze didn't affect me. I had sourwood honey, but everybody below me didn't. So because of that April 14th freeze, so those little fingers that start to pop out yeah. got damaged, and so there was no, if there's too much rain, if there's not, an, you know, if there's not enough rain. It's a very particular thing. So it's not an it, uh, annually consistent flow, but when you have the flow, it's a, it's a major flow. There's more sourwood than there is wildflower. So the wildflower blooms, and it stops blooming around, you know, June. Uh -huh. You take all those supers off your hive, you spin it out, you give the bee back, and they dry out and clean up those frames for you. And then about July 4th, you get the sourwood flow, and there's really nothing else blooming. So you can have a true varietal honey. On a good and, flow, what's the kind of harvest that you can take? Well, I, let's say I have, and I do, I do small hives. I do eight frame mediums for my hives, okay. and I do. So I'll get... Um, you know, 100 pounds of honey off of a sourwood flow where I get maybe 50 pounds off. So I typically, for my, for me, if I have, depending on how many hives are actually doing it at the time because everything swarms and everything, I'll make about 600 pounds of sourwood wow. in a good year. And I've got, right now I've got 11 hives, but typically about, you know, you know how it works, about eight or nine of them might be, you know, yeah. not swarmed or, yeah, you yeah. know, kind of, who knows, you know, weren't splits and you know, that are actually producing. So it's a fabulous honey. I've won blue ribbons all over the state. I'm a Welsh honey judge, which is um, a, a long time in getting there. So I've judged at Apamundia and places like that. But before I judged, how I got into judging was entering honey shows and winning blue ribbons from us, both sour and Wildflower. Well, I'm going to have to, uh, yeah, uh, uh, we have Michael Young here. I'm going to see if I have a quarter. So Michael is who approved me to be a honey judge. So I want to get learn a, about this, this. If you have a chance to talk to Michael. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's, um, he's some, or Brett's English, if you get a chance. Brett's runs it in the United States. I'm well, thank you so much. And I will, I, if you, are, I know, the one thing I will say, I was really delighted to hear, because I have one jar. It's not going to last very long that I can mail order this. So. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Please do. I send it. My my sister is in Washington State, so every year I have to. You know what she did one year? She took my honey and rebottled it and gave it to her friends. So I thought, well, really? So she bottled it in the little four ounce thing. So she bought a whole bunch of my honey and. Well. But she did give me credit for the honey that I. I, I if, but I every year I sell my sister honey out in Oregon. If in Joe Maresh uh, is listening, I did that with Joe's fireweed honey. So oh, I, Joe's, I got. Oh, fireweed honey! What uh, a wonderful. That's it, a. That's another everyone tricky says their, plant. their second favorite honey to sour with this probably. <laughs> well, thanks for taking the time. I really appreciate it, and I'm um, really uh, amazed with all the great things that you guys are doing here in Georgia. Well, I hope you come back. I loved your talk today, by the way. I'm coming Thank back. Thank you for coming. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening. The show is produced by Quinn Sin and Neil, who's a student here at OSU in the New Media Communications Program. And the show wouldn't even be possible without the support of the Oregon Legislature, the Foundation for Food and Agricultural Research, and Western SARE. Show notes with links mentioned on each episode are available on the website, which is at pollinationpodcast.oregonstate.edu. I also love hearing from you, and there's several ways to connect with me. The first one is you can visit the website and leave an episode-specific comment. You can suggest a future guest or topic or ask a question that could be featured in a future episode. But you can do the same things on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook by visiting the Oregon Bee Project. Thanks so much for listening, and see you next week.